Intel just filed a patent for super D duper cores. They're getting desperate. Pretty much whatever sticks to the wall is what they're going with now. Should AMD be worried or is this just all hype? Boys, let's talk about it. If you have super cores, you're gonna need a super cable. I wanna tell you guys about Silklens DisplayPort 2.1 UBHR20 DisplayPort cable. Guys, this cable is really high quality. Silklens sent it over to me for free, so this is sponsored, but guys, I have to admit, I've had their products before. I've been using their products on my live streams. Go ahead and check out my live streams, by the way. All my data to my secondary PC, and these cables are super thick. They're braided, and just ultimate quality. Have had no sort of uh, cutouts or anything like that with their cables, so I can definitely recommend it. And this DisplayPort 2.1 cable, it's gonna get you that 4K 240 hertz without display stream compression. So if you're on a 50 series card, Go ahead and look at the Silklin in the link in the description below because they're gonna hook you up with a great deal and you're gonna be gaming in glorious 4K 240 hertz without any interruptions. Back to the video. The word got around and Intel filed this patent for these things called software defined super cores. And I think this caught everyone off guard, especially after the supposal cancellation of the Royal Core project leaked by Moore's Law's dead. If you don't know, Royal Core was supposed to be Intel scaling up its performance cores to just this ultimate large performance core that's probably like two times, maybe three times as big as the cores we have now. And it, it was gonna have this thing called rentable units, which basically allowed one core to have multiple threads at one time. It wasn't necessarily threads, but it could do multiple operations, uh, kind of like a multi-threaded core. Right, and that's what rentable units was gonna be. Apparently that's all canceled and we're getting these things called super cores now or software defined super cores. And here's the thing, this may be cope, but this thing might be better, right? With the, with the way Intel's going, I don't know if you guys know, but Intel's plan is actually ultimately to do away with P cores and only have E cores, right? <laughs> I know that might sound horrible to you guys, but the thing is their E-cores are getting so good. I mean, modern day E-cores are only P-cores minus 10, 15% guys, that uh, it's going to make more sense to get with an E-core than a P-core at this point, because eventually these E-cores are going to be matching P-cores uh, pretty much, especially with power efficiency and whatnot. So what's gonna happen here, it seems, is Intel eventually, you know, Moore's Law is dead leaked that the next Intel socket is gonna have four generations if you've been in, living under a rock. Yeah, um, LGA 1954, it's gonna have Nova Lake, uh, Razor Lake, Titan Lake, Hammer Lake, all on the same CPU socket, right? And that's kind of crazy to think about. If these things have a two-year cadence, that means this platform is gonna last till 2032. Now, Intel is not the one to, you know, <laughs> come out with some this some sort of longevity on their platforms many of you know this this is why a lot of you guys actually hate intel but the thing is i could see this happening i don't know about the two-year time sprint you know if this platform starts with nova lake that's going to be in 2026 pretty much 2027 right in, right in fall of 2026 and then it would end with hammer lake in 2032 with two-year um, cadence between each architecture now Let's say there's some refreshes here and there. Yeah, they could do that. But if there's only a one year cadence between all these products, this platform would end in 2030 probably, um, somewhere around there. And that, to me, that sounds a little bit more manageable for Intel to do that. You know, Nova Lake in 2026, Razor Lake in 2027, Titan Lake in 2028, then Hammer Lake in 2029 to 2030. Now, um, yeah. When does the super cores come into play with these architectures? I'm glad you asked because this thing, the, the, the key is in the name, right? Software defined super core, software. So theoretically, um, this patent is for a piece of software and I kind of wanted to touch on this. We're getting to the limits of computing hardware, physical hardware computing. I know we've been stuck on 40 nanometer for a little while with GPUs and CPUs, and that's a huge reason we haven't been seeing huge uplifts, but guys, we aren't gonna be able to shrink these transistors forever. We aren't gonna be able to 3D stack them forever. And eventually we're just gonna have to optimize our software and get smarter about how we write the code for these things. So my answer to your question, when is this coming? I don't know, but what platform is it coming to? I mean, it could come to Arrow Lake, it could come to Raptor Lake, it could come to Razor, Titan Lake. 
uh, it could come to any of these CPUs because, well, it's software defined. The thing is it might not run well in all these CPUs, right? Because if you uh, make a, an architecture in mind of using these super cores, it's probably gonna have a much faster, uh, lower latency and faster interconnects between the cores, right? Because something this article I read talks about is in order for this to work, and I guess I haven't even explained what a super core is. Let me go ahead and explain what a super core is. You know, Royal Core is taking one big core and splitting it into multiple pieces. What a super core is, is taking a lot of mini cores and putting them in software definition of one single core. So we're gonna take four E cores and make that just one ginormous P core and do single threaded operations, i.e. gaming with that core. And that's huge, guys. I mean, like we just said, E cores are slightly slower than P cores. So if you could get an E core cluster, they're in four E core clusters now, and make that one P core, I mean, you're looking at probably 2X the performance that you would get with a normal P core, you know, four E cores to one P core, right? So doubling of gaming performance right there. If they could get this to work, and that's with a lot of loss figured into the equation there. Without no loss, it would be like three and a half times gaming performance, right? So I'm saying you're losing 150% just from this process. I think that's fair. Because they're software defined, I think they could be implemented in any CPU we have today, although it probably would not be implemented well. And there's probably going to be trade-offs to that. So if I had to answer the question, when is this coming? Well, number one, I have no idea, but if I had to guess, I'm gonna say sometime on LGA 1954 because why would they file a patent and then not use this thing for like 10 years, right? Because if LGA 1954, you know, first we have Nova Lake, then Razor Lake, Titan Lake, Hammer Lake, at least it's gonna come around hopefully Titan Lake in 2030, 2028, somewhere around that range, depending on if they go with a one or two year cadence. I think they'll go with a two year cadence, to be honest with you guys. I, one year is kind of difficult for that stuff, but maybe if it's built on the same node, they could do one year cadence. And yeah, the overall super cores sound like a crazy invention. And with the elimination of P core sometime on, you know, maybe it's with, within Razor Lake or Titan Lake, um, on LGA 1954, we're only gonna have one kind of core. And that core is going to be the E core. You won't know it as the E core anymore because it will be so freaking fast, it's basically just gonna be a P core, but way smaller, right? And if they could combine, you know, four E cores and make that as powerful, twice as powerful as a P core would be, I'm all for it, right? Now we all know that Windows sucks at scheduling and Windows software is just basically garbage for any new hardware. So I don't know how Windows optimization is gonna be for this thing. It's probably not gonna run the best, but I'm looking forward to it. And don't even count AMD out yet, you know, with Intel filing this patent, because AMD is gonna have some trick up their sleeve as well. I'm sure they're gonna do 3D vCache to 3DX Super vCache or something. You know what I mean? I like how Intel's looking at the software side with APO and super defined uh, cores and then also looking at how they could change their hardware a little bit. I think combining those two things is probably a strategy for success. Where AMD seems right now is they're brute forcing it with the cache and right now that's working great for them and typically that's what PC gamer, gamers want is brute force. But that's just my thoughts guys. I think that uh, the CPU space is heating up like crazy. But guys, I wanted to let you know if you made it this far in the video, you probably like my content. You probably like listening to me talk. So I have a podcast coming out with Frogboy X1 Gaming. He's another YouTuber. I really like his content. He's just kind of off the cusp, no script, just says what he means. And he has some hot takes that I don't necessarily agree with. But once it's scalped, it'll probably be $1,500 anyway. So it's just like... By most of the time those cards come out, and NVIDIA's neural texture rendering is going to be out and you'll be able to use five, two gigabyte cards again, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm really glad he could join me on the podcast so we could kind of argue and just talk things out a little bit. So go ahead and look in the link in the description for the SFAB podcast and go check out that. It should be going live as soon as this video is going live. So yeah. And also guys, I just started, you know, a few days ago, my live stream, very first live stream of the channel. And I kind of liked it. We sat around, I had some audio issues at first. Bear with me, I'm figuring things out, but I tested out my 5090 and 4K max settings. 200 FPS in, at max settings, 4K. With this though, 5090 rips. So I think I'm, that's gonna be something I do semi-regularly, maybe every other week or so. So go ahead and always check my channel under the live tab. Check my post to see if I'm doing a live stream or anything like that. And just come out and chill with us on stream. Ask me any PC questions you got or if you want me to test the game. That's all I have to say. 
Silicon Steak, signing out. When he drops his taste, the haters stand still. Fanboys can cry, but they can't deny. Silicon stakes true.